Hello Sigmas, today we are going to look into the concept of uh, momentum flux and this concept is really special because it is going to tell you the importance of knowing dimensional analysis. To understand momentum flux, uh, let us consider a stream of water flowing through a pipe. So let's say this is a pipe, okay, and uh, there is water inside this pipe flowing in this direction and then uh, it will flow this way. And uh, this water strikes a wall placed uh, at some uh, distance. This is the wall. So this uh, water is uh, going to strike this wall and then uh, stop right there. So it flows down. Once it strikes, it flows down the wall. Now let's say the cross-sectional area of uh, this pipe, uh, this cross-sectional area is uh, A. And the water is uh, flowing with a speed of V in that direction. And uh, actually, uh, the velocity, it is uh, a velocity, right? The not a speed. And hence, I can write it like this, which is equal to V into V cap vector, unit vector. Let's say this uh, water has uh, a density that I'm calling rho m. Then what will be the momentum or the mass per unit length first let us speak about the mass per unit length uh, of uh, this uh, water why i'm speaking of mass per unit length is because this pipe is linear right this pipe is a linear body and hence we are going to speak of uh, the water flowing in that pipe in terms of its mass per unit length first so what would be its uh, mass per unit length its uh, mass per unit length is uh, going to be so mass per unit length is obviously going to be rho m into a right because uh, the density has the dimensions of uh, c I've, i have already begun using dimensional analysis and uh, we are going to use a great deal of uh, dimensional analysis in today's derivation so this density term has the dimensions of mass per unit volume and if you multiply it with area, obviously you're going to get have uh, the units of mass per unit length. So the mass per unit length of flowing through that pipe of a water is given by this amount, this quantity. Then what would be the momentum per unit length? If this is mass per unit length, if you multiply it with the velocity or the speed of that water, then you get. Uh, let me do it somewhere else. So we want uh, momentum. Per unit length that would obviously be equal to rho m a times the speed of water because this has the dimensions of mass per unit length and if you multiply it with velocity it would become momentum per unit length obviously because mass into velocity is equal to momentum and if this is the momentum per unit length then what would be the rate at which momentum is uh, flowing through that surface, through this wall that I had considered over here? What would be the rate at which uh, water is going to flow through that wall? It would obviously be equal to P uh, dot, I would say, because it's a rate of flow of momentum, right, would be equal to rho m a v now this has the dimensions of momentum per unit length if you just multiply it with the velocity vector this will have the dimensions uh, of uh, the rate of a flow of momentum because velocity has the dimensions of uh, length upon time so and this has the dimensions of momentum per unit length so let me write it here momentum per unit length multiplied by length upon time right this uh, velocity has dimensions of length upon time so this length length cancels you get momentum upon time and that is the rate of flow of momentum and what exactly do you think the rate of flow of momentum is it is nothing but the force that this water since this water is going to strike this wall it will obviously exert some force on this wall right it will exert some force on this wall and uh, this uh, rate of change of momentum is exactly that it is the force on the surface 
that the water is going to strike. And it is obviously in the direction of velocity, right? That is very obvious. Now here, the water was striking the surface at 90 degrees. You can easily see that this angle is 90 degrees. But what if uh, the water strikes uh, the surface uh, which is inclined at some angle? Consider this situation. This is a surface and it is making an angle theta with the vertical and uh, the uh, water is striking let me use blue color blue water so the water is striking it at some angle so what you can do is obviously take uh, components of it right so if i take a component along the surface and uh, a component in a direction parallel to the surface then obviously this component in a direction parallel to the surface does not exert any force on the surface all the force will be exerted by this component perpendicular to the surface and if this angle is theta then this angle is also theta we already know this from uh, our examples on inclined planes and if uh, that angle is theta then the force on the surface now that is the rate of change of momentum would be equal to rho m v square a cos theta right by v square from this velocity vector i can write it as a v times a v cap and then this v will get multiplied to this v to give us rho a v square and then we are only considering the cos theta component and at this point what we can do is define make a definition that is we are going to define a vector uh, that we shall call j and the j would be equal to rho m uh, v square v cap and you are soon going to see why uh, we are defining it in this manner because if you remove uh, rho m v square uh, from this uh, definition of the rate of, of flow of momentum then what remains is area and this quantity times the uh, area will give us something even more interesting so stay tuned right now this vector j is called the flux density of the stream. And after making this definition, we can make uh, another definition which is made all the time by mathematicians and also physicists and is very common. Uh, among uh, physicists and mathematicians so that is we are going to define an area vector right if uh, this water is striking this uh, uh, inclined plane at some area right i'm calling this area a then actually we can assign a vector to this area in a direction perpendicular to that area in this direction or i can assign a vector this is completely up to you right you can either assign the area vector in that direction or in this direction it just has to be perpendicular to that surface so if this is a surface then a vector in this direction perpendicular to the surface can be its area vector or a vector in the opposite direction which is also perpendicular to the surface can be its area vector it's completely up to you in which direction you choose your area vector to be but once you have chosen or made the convention that the inward direction is a positive area vector you cannot change it it remains uh, the same throughout the derivation and you have to take care of it so in our case i'm going to define this inward direction the direction in which uh, the water is uh, hitting the surface as the positive area vector right area vector like this and it's a magnitude is obviously equal to the area of the surface so the magnitude uh, let me write it below the magnitude of this area vector is equal to the area of the cross section So or surface. And now since we have made this definition, so you can easily see that this quantity times the area can be written and into cos theta can be written in a better way. We can write it 
this is not a vector this is a scalar because we have we have considered only the magnitude actually it was going to be in the weekend prediction because we have taken cos theta so yeah i can write it as a vector also so then uh, we can write this quantity as a uh, momentum flow is uh, equal to j dot a v cap i can write this quantity like that because this is going to be j a cos theta which is nothing but j dot a times a v cap that is because momentum is a vector and it will have some direction that will be given by v cap obviously as we have already seen and now this is what our derivation was all about this is this quantity right uh, p dot is known as the flux or flow of the momentum to the surface right this is the flux which is also the flow of momentum to the surface now this is uh, only uh, an uh, example of a flux uh, here we looked into momentum flux but once we are going to start with uh, electrodynamics we are going to learn something that is known as gauss's law it is okay if you do not know about it because anyways we are going to uh, study it soon when i make a video on the gauss's law but uh, in gauss's law also you have this flux of electric field right and hence this quantity of flux of various quantities that keep appearing in physics uh, everywhere and hence is very important to study now since a momentum is a vector its a flux is a also a vector so this is a vector quantity if it was a scalar then its flux would have been a scalar now in real life uh, situations uh, you may, you must have noticed that this is not true water doesn't simply uh, hit a surface and stop uh, what happens is water will hit a surface and bounce back okay so in that case what you have to do is uh, sum the momentum so right now uh, if uh, the water is uh, hitting the surface that is traveling in this direction then the flux uh, which is j dot a is going to be positive right because that is the convention that we have made that the area vector is positive in that direction and if the water is leaving the surface in the other direction then the j dot a is obviously going to be negative and in this manner the total force on a system due to the number of sources of momentum flow can be written as so the total force f total on that surface can be written as the sum of uh, the momentum fluxes that is the various uh, flux that is uh, experienced uh, by that surface and that would obviously be equal to the sum uh, we can write it like this jk dot ak times v dot k so i can write it as a sum over k that is what you have to do is that there will be uh, let's say this is uh, let's uh, again uh, draw a surface so if uh, this is a surface then uh, there will be not only uh, water uh, coming from this direction but there will be water coming from uh, various uh, directions and uh, hence uh, what you have to do is just sum the momentum flux due to all those uh, water sources or it can be any sources but here we are taking the example of water hitting a surface and in fact there is a trick of uh, calculating this uh, in a more easier manner what you can do is first find only the momentum flux which is due to the inward flux that is only due to what is coming in right that is striking the surface only due to that you can consider the momentum flux and then what you can do is separately calculate the momentum flux due to the a stream of particles leaving the surface that is going out of the surface like this there will be something some particles that will leave the surface in this direction right as i told you the water when it strikes the surface it doesn't stop there it rebounds it rebounds up from there 
and hence there will be moment of loss due to that water which is leaving the cell. So you calculate them separately. You calculate the incoming flux. You calculate the outgoing flux, and then what you do is calculate the total force on that surface as the ingoing flux minus the outgoing flux so all you have to do is calculate the ingoing flux and outgoing flux separately and then subtract them to get the total force on that body and that turns out to be way easier than adding them one by one so this was a short trick to easily calculate the total force on a surface and that was all about momentum flux if you like this video then uh, do subscribe to my channel and uh, share this video with your friends i will see you in the next one thanks for watching